In this video, I'm going to give you a rundown of how this rear link camera compares to the Arlo Pro 2 I have mounted over my garage. And we're going to get this camera connected to Home Assistant. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone? My name is Jeff and this is Slacker Labs, where we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant and Smart Home Tech. In this video, I want to do a quick review of the Reolink 510A. Reolink was kind enough to send me a 510A to try out. I was not paid to do this video. In fact, Reolink offered no direction in terms of the content of this video. But since I've been using the Arlo Pro 2 cameras for a little more than a year now, I thought this would be a good opportunity to see how the Reolink camera actually compares to the Arlo Pro 2. Because on paper, the Reolink camera is about half the cost of the Arlo Pro 2 with more functionality out of the box. Speaking of the box. In the box, you get a short ethernet cable, which if you're mounting this camera close to an existing ethernet port, means you don't need another ethernet cable. Some instructions and a Reolink security sticker, some mounting hardware, and the 510A. Installation of this camera was pretty easy. The hardest part in my case was running the cable through the attic, which based on where I chose to mount this camera for this test, wasn't all that difficult. However, I didn't record any of that process because really, who wants to see me running cable through my attic? But all it took was me drilling a hole in the wall so I could get the cable from the camera into my attic and then mounting the camera to the wall. Since you can use power over ethernet to power this camera, getting it connected to the network and to power requires just one cable. Once the camera was powered up, I downloaded the Reolink app to my iPhone. As soon as I opened the app, it found my camera and I was able to view the live feed, but it told me my camera wasn't initialized yet. This was before I had created a Reolink cloud login, which I suspect you may not need one with this camera. But wait, aren't you supposed to create a login for these apps before you can add cameras to them? Anyway, the next step was initializing the camera, which required me to create a local login on the camera and name the device. Since I mounted this under a window over my driveway, next to where my Arlo Pro 2 was, I just named this camera driveway. And that's it, the device is initialized and ready to go. Now, from what I can tell, you can't connect the 510A to the Reolink cloud for storing video. So if you wanna get video off of this camera, you're going to need an SD card. I had a 64 gigabyte card laying around, so I just threw that in the camera. Once you have the SD card installed in the camera, you can enable recording. In the Reolink app, click the cog on your device to get into the settings. Then click on camera recording and turn it on. Then you can set up a schedule for your camera to record either on an alarm event like detecting motion, person, or a vehicle, or you can set a timer that will enable your camera to record continuously for the schedule you set. Be sure to turn on the overwrite feature if you wanna make sure your latest video is recorded to your SD card no matter how full the SD card is. Now, if you want the camera to notify you when it detects a person or a vehicle, you're going to want to enable push notifications. To do that, click on the cog of your device to get into the settings again, and then turn on push notifications. Next, you're going to want to set which notifications you want to receive. And if you want, you can set a schedule. So far, the person and vehicle notification seems to work pretty well. In fact, I took a break shortly after installing this camera and was sitting inside when I got a notification that a person had been detected on my driveway. I opened the app thinking this was going to be a false alarm because there shouldn't have been anyone on the driveway, but turns out a friend had stopped by unannounced. So far, the only time I've gotten false alarms with the person detection have been at night when it's raining. But outside of that, this camera is pretty amazing. The only thing I really don't like about this camera is the field of view, and frankly, that was not something I considered before I mounted it where it was. So I plan on moving this camera to a better location in the near future so I can take better advantage of its field of view. So how does this camera stack up with the Arlo Pro 2? Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of some footage I pulled off of my Arlo Pro 2 and some footage off of the Reolink camera. 
These cameras are mounted side by side, and you can see the differences in the field of view, but I think you can tell that the Reolink camera recording quality is much better. The Reolink is a newer camera, so maybe that's not a fair comparison. But the Reolink is a quarter to half the cost of an Arlo Pro 2 camera, so going forward, I think I'm just going to buy Reolink cameras. I had originally gotten the Arlo Pro 2 system because I didn't want to run cables. And if that's you, or you want to mount the camera someplace where it's not easy to run cable, the Arlo Pro 2s work well enough that I think they'll get the job done. But after spending a few days with this camera, I'm ready to run cable all over my attic, which is really weird because I hate running cable. But even though I feel like I'm all in on Reolink cameras now, I did run into a few issues. The quality of the videos you get exporting from the app to your phone is pretty poor. It's well enough to view on the phone, but if you want to view that video on a desktop, the quality just doesn't hold up. But going to the web interface of the camera allows you to download the full resolution video to your desktop. And while this camera has vehicle detection, camera placement is going to be key unless you want to get spammed with notifications. At first, I got excited because I thought I could use the vehicle detection as another layer in my presence detection system. For example, two cars in front of the garage would mean everyone is home. But it turns out that while this camera is really good at detecting vehicles, it has the memory of a newborn. Which really isn't that big of a deal because I don't think that was the intended purpose of that feature. But since I usually have at least one car parked on the driveway, this camera would constantly remind me that it had detected a vehicle even though no vehicles had come or gone since the last time it had sent that notification. So that feature would be perfect if this camera was pointed at a gate or at the end of your driveway, someplace where cars were passing through, but not really parked in the field of view of this camera. If you're going to be parking cars in the field of view of this camera, I would turn that feature off just to save your sanity. Okay, so now that we have an idea of how this camera looks and works and how it compares to the Arlo Pro 2, Let's get it into Home Assistant. First thing I would do is create another local login on your camera. While you could use the login that you created in the initialization step, I would urge you to take an extra step and create a non-admin user. In the Reolink app, click the cog and go into Settings. Then Advanced, then User Management. Here, you want to click Create a User. No need for this to be an admin account, and like I said before, you probably don't want it to be an admin account. Once you have a login you're ready to use, it's time to integrate. To do that, we're going to need a Hacks or Home Assistant Community Store integration. This integration is not in the main list, so we're going to need to add a repo. Adding repos in Hacks works the same way as it does in Supervisor. We will need the URL to the GitHub repo. I'll put a link to it in the description, or you can just search Google for Home Assistant Reolink add-on. This add-on will give you a camera entity as well as some switches for controlling some of the camera features. And you'll get a motion sensor that will come in handy a bit later. However, per the docs, the motion sensor will only work if your instance of Home Assistant is accessible internally via HTTP and not HTTPS. I'm using Nginx as my proxy, so my internal access is not using SSL, so I'm good. Once we get the URL, then we need to head over to the community option on our menu. Here we're going to click integrations. Then go to three dots in the upper right. Here we choose custom repositories. Then we paste in our URL. Select integration for our category and click add. Now we just need to click install. Once that's done, you'll need to restart Home Assistant. While that's restarting, I want to take a moment and plug Hacks or the Home Assistant Community Store. If you're not already using Hacks, installation is pretty easy, and it has some pretty good add-ons that I think you might be able to take advantage of. For example, I'm using the Aero integration, which adds device trackers for my network devices, the WISE integration for connecting WISE devices, and the Mail and Packages add-on, which makes adding USPS, FedEx, and UPS tracking to Home Assistant really easy. I don't already have a video on installing hacks, but I plan on doing a lab notes video of that in the future. In the meantime, check out some links in the description for other YouTubers that have done videos on installing hacks. Okay, now that Home Assistant has restarted, we can head over to configuration and then integrations. Here we click add integration. 
and then search for RioLink. Enter the IP of your camera and then the login you want to use or the one you created. When you click finish, you should see your camera. Clicking on this device shows us that we have a handful of entities. The driveway motion sensor should switch to clear in a bit. Sometimes flipping one of these switches triggers it to update if you're impatient. Then all we need to do is add this camera to our Lovelace UI. Here I'm going to add a picture glance card. Title will be driveway. I'm going to select the camera entity. The camera view I'll leave as auto, but you could switch it to live. And then I typically add the motion sensor as an entity just to give me a glance at the state of that sensor. And that's it. We now have our camera integrated into Home Assistant. But what if you want Home Assistant to be aware of when a vehicle or a person is detected so that you could fire off automations? Unfortunately, I don't see a way to get that sensor into Home Assistant using this integration. So you're stuck with using the notification from the RioLink app, which of course is boring stuff. And we're all about automating the boring stuff, right? So we're going to look at another option of how we can get that notification into Home Assistant. And to do that, we're going to use Dudes. Dudes is an object detection service that can run as a Home Assistant add-on. Now, as you can imagine, this is some resource intensive work because Dudes is using some fancy AI stuff to detect objects in the camera images. I have not tested this on a Raspberry Pi yet, but I've seen videos where it's working. So if you're using a Raspberry Pi, you may be good here, but it does work well with Home Assistant Blue, which is what I'm using. To set up the Dudes add-on, we're going to need to add a repo to our supervisor. Snowzak has a repo that has this Dudes add-on, so we're going to need to grab the URL to his GitHub repo. Link is in the description. Once we have that link, we can head to the add-on store. Click the three dots in the upper right and choose Repositories. We paste in the repo URL and we click Add. You should now have four options. If you're using a Raspberry Pi or a Home Assistant Blue, you want the main one here. The others will be your choice if you're running AMD or Intel or NVIDIA GPU based processors. Once you select your option, just click install. For this add-on, I didn't change any of the configuration. Although I've seen some mention that if you're running this on a Raspberry Pi, you might want to use the TensorFlow Lite detector. I'll drop a link in the description to some other videos on dudes, which will have more detail on getting this set up on your hardware. Since this video is more about what dudes can do than setting it up, I will leave all of this at the default. Then all that is left to do here is click start. Flip over to the log and make sure that you see that the API is listening. Now we need to configure Home Assistant to use this dude service. Unfortunately, there is no way to do this in the UI, so we're going to have to YAML it. First, you'll need to set up the image processing config. This is the part that creates the image processing entities for your camera. Then all we need to do is call these entities anytime we want dudes to analyze the video. You can drop this section of configuration in your configuration.yaml file or in a package if you're using packages to split up your config. Mine is located in my camera.yaml file in my packages folder. Here, we're going to have an image processing header. The platform is dudes. URL is the internal IP of your Home Assistant instance with the port 8080. I set the scan interval high so that I can call this service on demand. The default is 10 seconds. So setting it high means that we can use a motion sensor to tell us when to check the image as opposed to constantly checking the video. This cuts down on the resource usage and the noise. Source is the camera entity you want to process images for. You can list multiple cameras here and on restart you'll get an image processing entity for each camera you define. File out is the path you want to store an image when it's processed. This helps you troubleshoot potential issues and just have a record of the image dudes analyzed for objects. And I'm using some Jinja here to split out the entity name so that if I have multiple cameras, each image will be labeled based on the camera it was from, and I point that path to a folder in my media directory. Dudes can detect quite a bit, so for now I'd want it just to detect people, so I create a label section for person and I set the confidence to 40. For your use case, you may need to increase or decrease that confidence. This confidence value is just the score on a scale of 0 
to 100, indicating how confident Dudes is that the object is the label you're looking for. You could remove the label section and Dudes will report everything it sees. But in my tests, that is extremely noisy. And unless you want to know if there's a couch or a cup or a laptop in your living room, then I would define which objects you're looking for. Once you have all that set up, you'll want to restart. And when you come back up, you should have an image processing entity for every camera you included in that imaging processing section. Next up is the automation that will trigger any time that the camera senses motion and then analyze the picture for the objects we're looking for. That part we can do in the UI. So head over to configuration and then automations. Here is the automation I created to test. I gave it the name of dudes testing since I'm testing dudes. For the trigger, I'm using the binary sensor created from the RioLink add-on, and we want to trigger when the state goes from off to on. Then for action, we want to call a service. The service we're going to call is the Imaging Processing Scan service. Then we need to pass the service the Imaging Processing Entity ID that was created for our camera, in this case, our dude's driveway entity. You could use the pick entity to find it, or flip to the YAML editor and type it yourself. Since I wanted Home Assistant to only notify me when a person was detected, I used the choose action so I could make sure that a person was detected before I fired off my notification. I'm using a custom text notification script and a template in the message, so I had to do this part in the YAML. For the condition, I'm just checking the numeric state of the image processing entity for our camera. Like I said, if an object was detected, this state will be the count of objects detected. So we want to only continue with this choice if the count is above zero. Next, we call my text notification script. We pass it the who, which is the person the notification should go to, title, message which will be X people detected near vehicles, URL is the path of the latest driveway image to include, and content is JPEG, since this image is a JPEG. Now, under the hood, this custom service is just calling the mobile app notification service, which you could do in place of this. But I created a script that allows me to supply the who, so I don't have to remember to call each specific notification service for each person. And that's it. So now let's see it in action. I turned on my screen recording and took a walk. What you're looking at is my UI with the camera feed. Below it, I added an entity card to display the current state of the image processing entity, which for now is zero since it's detected no people. As you can see, it's dark when I did this. What you don't see is me stopping by to tell my wife who's in the garage throwing pots, I will be outside near the cars so she doesn't freak out if I make noise. The garage used to be a wood shop, now it's a pottery studio, but I'm not bitter. But what you should see, as soon as I enter the frame of the video, the count of objects detected should go to one, and I should get a notification on my phone with a message that a person was detected. Just like that. And there we go. We have successfully integrated a RioLink 510A into Home Assistant and set up dudes so that Home Assistant can get into the vehicle detection fun too. Personally, I like this RioLink camera and I'll be looking to add some more to my Home Assistant setup. Also, I think I'll be looking for more ways to leverage dudes as well. So far, I've tested dudes with my WISE cameras in my house as well as the Arlo Pro 2s. The WISE cameras work pretty well. The Arlo Pro 2s, not so much, because the Home Assistant camera entity only sees the last recorded video, not the live feed. Since there's a delay between when Home Assistant gets notified that there's motion and when it sees the updated image from the camera, the dude service never sees any objects in the video. There might be a way to make it happen, but I haven't dug into that further. Anyway, that's all the time we have for this video. Again, I want to thank RioLink for sending me the camera to try out. If you're in the market for some outdoor cameras that can integrate with Home Assistant, check out their lineup. They have some affordable options. If you found this video useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. And as always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff. Thank you.